Upwards of half a million farmers have been on strike in India for almost a month in a historic movement jolting the nation and spurring a wave of solidarity from across the world. Representing over 50 different unions and organizations, the farmers are calling for the withdrawal of three agricultural reform laws backed by some of the nation's multi-billion dollar corporations. The striking farmers say that the bills will make their crop prices plummet, destroying their ability to make a livable pay. I spoke with Viju Krishna, Joint Secretary of the All India Peasants Union. Despite repression, de despite many of the leaders being kept under arrest, um, farmers are reaching Delhi. We are expecting a, thousands of farmers in another two or three days to join uh, 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 on these uh, protest sites across Delhi. It is now around 25 days of um, people sitting in the uh, freezing cold. About 40 farmers have become martyrs in this struggle who have died uh, during this struggle. Despite that, the BJP government, the Narendra Modi government, in a very, um, uh, very much reminiscent of uh, the um, uh, Emperor Nero, is busy uh, fiddling when uh, the country is burning. Since the nationwide general strike made history as the largest strike ever recorded back on November 27th, the farmers have kept five major highways outside of India's capital, New Delhi, shut down. Farmers have persevered despite an onslaught of violence from state and national police. They've taken their tractors and trucks to the streets to plow down barricades and take over the highways. The workers came prepared to stay, building encampments with beds and community kitchens. People have come prepared for the long haul. They know it is a government which uh, is known for uh, its uh, repressive measures, known for um, trying to break up democratic protests. Um, threats and intimidations are happening. The corporate reforms are pushed by the far-right BJP government. The National Indian Farmers Union has sued to stop the reforms in the Supreme Court, calling the laws arbitrary since the parliament neglected to consult with any farmers organizations and bypass procedural norms to rush them into law. In effect, these are the uh, dictates of the WTO, which countries like United States and the European Union countries have um, repeatedly in the World Trade Organization been pressurizing India to cut down on food subsidies, on agriculture subsidies, and withdraw from public stock holding. And now you had these three acts coming up. The first act literally dismantles the agricultural produce marketing committees, which uh, were actually brought in, uh, put in place to try and create a level playing field for the farmers where um, earlier the big traders were literally um, um, looting the farmers by paying very little for their price, uh, for their pro produce, and also pleasing the consumers by charging high rates. The Essential Commodity Act uh, was earlier brought in 1950s to ensure that there would be no um, holding and black marketing of essential commodities. Today, the Government Act with, uh, uh, has delisted some of the essential commodities, especially rice, wheat, different oil seeds, pulses, potato, onion, and all these um, uh, essentials from the list. And it says, uh, it gives uh, uh, the corporate companies, the big agribusinesses, the right to store as much as they want. The third act, um, while it talks about uh, empowerment of farmers and price assurance, nowhere is does it mention that the minimum support price decided by the government, which would be at least 50% more than the cost of production, would be legally binding on the agribusinesses. And even the right of the farmers to go to court was denied in this act. So it, was actually, it is an act actually to promote corporate contract farming, where the farmers would be forced to produce whatever these companies are deciding on. Corporations have benefited vastly 
since the BJP came to power in 2014 under President Narendra Modi. And the payoff has gone both ways. 79% of corporate donations in 2018 through 2019 went to the far-right party. The farm workers upped the ante when they called for a general boycott of all products from the nation's wealthiest corporations. Like other billionaires worldwide, India's most powerful capitalists have seen their wealth multiply during the pandemic. While rates of hunger, unemployment, and extreme poverty have soared among the nation's 1.3 billion people. Over 10 million Indians have been infected and nearly 146,000 have lost their lives to the virus. Uh, there was absolutely no planning or preparedness when on March 24th, suddenly the government announced that there would be a lockdown. The farmers of India were expecting a bumper crop at that time. April, May is the um, harvest time for wheat, uh, different pulses, uh, vegetables like cauliflower, potato, onion in some areas, corn, and different fruits. But the manner in which the lockdown was announced, it led to a situation where the workers were unable to, uh, uh, the farm workers were forced to actually uh, move back uh, to their hometowns or their villages in the biggest exodus in India after, ever since the partition of India in 1947. Millions of workers were forced to uh, flee from their places of work to their um, hometowns or villages because of the manner in which the government implemented the lockdown. The workers were left to fend for themselves. Thousands of pe uh, people died in this process, either due to hunger or due to accidents or by committing suicide. In such circumstances, the farm farmers across the country had also suffered huge losses of income. There was a harvesting crisis and a marketing crisis leading to loss of incomes, but this government failed to provide any kind of relief to the farmers. Farmer strikes are not themselves new. The All India Peasant Union, or AIKS, the Farmers' Front of the Communist Party of India Marxist, led a two-week-long peasant strike in the state of Rajasthan back in 2017. In the years since that strike, the struggle has brought wider unity between farmers' organizations and unions across India. A coalition of more than 200 farmers' organizations joined together to form the All India Farmers' Struggle Coordination Committee, or the AIKSCC, which banded together with factions of other big farmers' unions to create the United Farmers' Front, which is leading this historic strike today. Another factor that makes this strike so profound and distinct from the struggles of the recent past is the outpouring of solidarity from people across India and the world. The Seattle City Council uh, passed a resolution in support of the farmers' struggle. There have been different uh, kinds of solidarity actions, um, candlelight uh, vigils, you have had uh, different uh, uh, vehicles coming out in support of the farmers and so on, which has happened in uh, Europe, in uh, Australia, in United States, may, uh, literally uh, in uh, across the globe, there has been these protests which are happening, solidarity actions which are happening. That is, uh, that strengthens our movement all the more. 